Let's uh, get across what we're seeing, perhaps more broadly at the moment, uh, given what's playing out on global markets. Peter Maguire joining us from XM. Pete, strap yourself in for a uh, another bumpy ride on this Monday. Absolutely, Andrew. Well, we said last week was going to be bumpy, and it certainly didn't disappoint. So as we roll through, we saw some big news items come out Friday and weaker than expected uh, NFP for the non-farm payrolls. So how we're looking, we've got RBA meeting this week and you know, had to look at what happened to the Nikkei on Friday that was smashed down nearly 6%. So yeah, there's uh, plenty of fun and games ahead for the next few sessions. All right, well, let's just check out that daily performance chart that you come up with. Uh, are there any positives to take hold of at the moment? Well, I think from a, unfortunately from a war perspective, I think WTI will probably bounce to the upside. Uh, there seems to be tension there as far as Israel versus is, uh, Iran. And that's where oil's, it's down at a seven month low, Andrew. So you could see a little bit of movement to the upside. Gold's been strong on the fear and US dollars come off strongly. So that's been um, a very, very positive trade. Euro, US dollar again. And then you're looking at the ones in red there. Have a look what happened to the yen. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's had a very solid move against that US dollar. You're now sitting the best part of 145. So, Pete, given that focus at the moment on weakening U.S. economic growth, how's that likely yeah. to play out, particularly that uh, inverse relationship between the U.S. dollar and also gold? Well, I think gold, Andrew, it, there's many factors that roll into it. Naturally, you've got central bank buying. You've got a very, very big um, well, retail public across the globe that are embracing gold and buying up. Then you've got the next part, geopolitics plays into it. And you're nearly at 24 or 2500. I mean, you're only 20 bucks short. And I feel as though that the momentum, US dollar coming off, more fear going in, what's happening as far as rate expectations with the Fed is at a 50 basis point cut in September. That seems to be, you know, pretty much, well, the word on the street if you're looking at Citibank and the, and the big investment banks. So I think that gold's got its best days ahead of it as we roll in and it's three months away from the election. Now, Pete, you mentioned a key event locally this week, of course, is tomorrow's RBA meeting. So yeah. uh, following that CPI read, of course, now expectations, they're going to leave rates on hold. Interesting how this is playing out at a commentary level, though, at the moment. I was just taking a look at some um, economists and pundits uh, this morning, perhaps even arguing for the need for a cut, given what we're seeing in the States, of course, and that underlying weakness. Exactly, Andrew. Well, they're saying it's 25 basis points are baked in by December, but it could be pulled, I think, earlier. Um, and again, you know, let's see what happens as far as the, over the next couple of weeks with the Fed and pretty sure that if they do do a 50 basis point, I don't think we'd be sitting pat. We'd have to do something as well. So there's the, that side of it. And the overall theme domestically here, what's happening, if we see a further route as far as more sell-off in equities, um, you've got unemployment issues here and you've got the overall economy. You know, the inflation story is still biting hard on Main Street. So, yeah, there's plenty of moving parts to this and it's going to be an interesting roll up to December. Yeah. Uh, oh, we jumped ahead of ourselves. I was just looking at the Australian CPI. Yeah. But, yeah, OK, well, let, let's move on to what we're seeing with the uh, in the US, of course, expectations that, well, the market pricing in 100% chance of a rate cut at the September meeting, although maybe not just 25 basis points. Now the bets are affirming for a 50 basis point rate cut. Well, that's right, Andrew. And if that was the story and if they do deliver that, then that's, I think, going to put a lot of negative sentiment into the market to say, well, is the Fed too far behind the curve in the sense of pulling rates back? So it's a, it's a damn hard position at the moment. And then is that going to be the only cut moving forward? Many analysts are saying you're going to see another 50 basis point cut sometime later in the year and then possibly in the new year. So a, a further 25. So, you know, there's a lot of, um, well, just so many different scenarios that can play into this. And then what impact that naturally has on US dollar and, of course, currencies. All right. Speaking of which, then, let's uh, go there in particular. And you mentioned this before, just as far as that that tremendous movement we've seen with the yen of late off the back of that decision from the Bank of Japan. And of course, now we've got further pressure on the US dollar. How are you seeing this playing out, Pete? Well, you were, you know, only a couple of weeks ago, Andrew, we were at 162. Now we're at 145. So that's just from a trading perspective. It's been on fire. It's been a dynamic market to trade. Then the next part is how much lower can the yen drive? You had, a, you know, the, the um, 15 basis point hike last week. 
I think there's probably more momentum. Everyone seems to be conscious of that as far as, you know, yen's got more upside uh, strengthening against that US dollar. So as the US dollar um, takes a little bit further, you know, southbound at 103.20 for that US dollar index, then, yeah, there could be a little bit more momentum there. But it's been an incredible trade. I mean, if you traded anything in the last month, yen has been the market. Absolutely. Now, Pete, um, also we did, certainly on Friday, we saw uh, very much uh, risk off on yeah. markets. So perhaps no surprise then we have seen Bitcoin take a dive. Absolutely. 58,000, Andrew, have been hit hard and hit hard, you know, considering where gold is, they're not in tandem. So you've got the, what, $58,045. So you could be through the 58 handle very shortly. It's volatile. Um, I mean, it was only a couple of days ago, it was at 66. So big swings and roundabouts, trade seven days a week. And uh, yeah, if you want to strap yourself in for something, that's as volatile as you'll ever see.